Hey everyone, welcome to Amps Pedals and Pickups while I resume my month-long review of Amp Sims. Today I'm going to be checking out the Auto 11, 11, 11, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. You know the one, super, super heavy stuff. Let's check out what Auto has to offer. <laughs> All right, let's check out the plugin. So this is a deceptive uh, little beast here because there's actually a lot of stuff going on under the hood. Uh, if you just take a look at the interface here, if you click on the tubes, you get a full back section of the amp that we'll check out in just a sec. Um, this logo here changes the impedance. So there's a whole bunch of different impedance curves. You've got your typical tone stack going on there. You can change the cabs from the front or the back of the amp. That's super handy. Uh, you have all your different presets going on here. But besides the presets, if you just like the sound that's going on, you can change the style of amp, I think they call it. I've just consulted the manual. It's a tonal structure. So they're saying there's 13 different tonal structures. I'll chuck that up on the screen so it makes a little bit more sense. You have your input knob, your output knob. Now for the mono stereo routing stuff, it defaults you to mono stereo, although it's a little bit different with all the different presets. But if we just play through it now, this is what it sounds like. You get that doubling effect going on. Defaults to oversampling with four times. Uh, you've got punch and power amp control. So all this sort of stuff you can switch off if you don't need it. But I find that the way that they lay everything out to you is pretty good on. But if you need that little source, you can turn things off and on. Why don't we roll into the mix to see how the stock standard tones from auto audio fix into the mix as well as guitars only. And then we'll start playing around with some tones. <laughs>
right, I'm definitely pulling up the manual now because we're going to take a look at the back of the amp. We have a punch, which is like an OD pedal in there, super handy, plus TB, plus 10 dB of clean boost, which is great. There's a low knob that actually increases the lows. It doesn't cut the lows. Uh, you have a gate function there. You have your different tubes. So you can change different tube types, bias, sag, feedback, and snarl. Once again, I'll chuck up the manual there. That'll explain everything much better than I can. But I really like that they have the stuff there. One of the things I really liked about the fractal units is having these sort of advanced amp controls. And when I'm going into dialing in a tone, we'll, we'll mess around with those and see the full effect of everything. Then you have your ampler tube here. So this is the power, I guess the power amp hitting the speakers. So the game would be the preamp hitting the power amp, but this is the power amp hitting the speakers. So you can mess with that if that's your, the sort of thing you want to do. You can change all the cab sections here. So just like the front of the amp, you can also bypass the IR if you want to run your own thing. And then finally you have independent resonance control for each cab. So I've just got uh, a new instance of auto audio here. I've zeroed everything out. Uh, this is how everything sounds out of the box. Pretty, pretty decent straight out of the box. So you can tell they do uh, default you to this mono stereo thing, which honestly, Sometimes the tracking things is a little bit goofy. It actually sounds really, really nice. I know they've got some extra source going on here with this. I'm just gonna turn it off because I wanna keep things fair with these amp sim reviews. All right, so let's check out some of these uh, tonal varieties as they call them. So we'll start with this one. These are all the different types. When, when an amp sim has like thousands of permutations, it's hard to flick through everything, but that should just give you a little taste. All right, let's check out this uh, 51 solo preset. <laughs> Chuck that to mono. Gotta watch that one. It seems to change it a lot of the time. That slinky bottom end going on. Block letter. Block letter. Let's check out this Mesa preset. I'll tell you what, that double tracking does sound good. Let's, I'll leave it for this one. Check out the different impedance curves. Uh, so it's on impedance curve eight. I might just flick the mix on and off so we can hear it, but actually let's have a listen first and then we'll do it in the mix. So let's, uh, let's just check out those in the context of the mix. So we'll start with eight and then we'll go through a few of them. You know, I love that they have all these options here, but I'm going to quote uh, White Sea Studio with this stuff is they got to they got to auto gain the thing is because when you're going through it, it's just so hard to tell. Uh, so look, for now, my only takeaway here is that like different impedance curves exist. If you like the sound of an impedance curve, you probably have to go and like fine tune things with the auto gain. I did find that a little bit throughout this plugin, and I'm sure we're going to see it a little bit more and more. Uh, I like what they're doing. You just need to auto gain things to make our lives a little bit easier. So they have different mod options there. Let's flick that. Not noticing a ton of difference here with this riff and everything. And that, that's another thing, like different guitars, different riffs, how distorted you're going to get it. These things like may or may not make bigger differences. Uh, so this punish option should make a pretty big difference because it's like an overdrive pedal. We should get a lot more low end coming back.
yeah, it's a super handy option having that there, the extra 10 dB boost. Just absolute savages turning off the tube screamer and increasing the lows. Let's get it back to there. All right, let's check out the different uh, tube types. We've got the 6L6. This wasn't gain matched from memory, which was another slightly annoying thing. All right, hopefully you can hear the, uh, the distortion characteristics changing with all this stuff. Let's keep going to the bias. Yeah, that just needs to be gain matched. It's, it's very, very hard to hear uh, analytically what this stuff's doing when the gain is uh, we're changing so much. Okay, let's go to the SAG. So at least with this one here, yes, there's a bit of a volume difference, but you can hear the like overall effect, effect that it's doing uh, with the sag all the way up. It's like a lot more compressed and then take it out. It's uncompressed. It's funny because like a lot of times uh, I can't find the descriptive words and I don't like an amp for some reason. And then, but then some amp tube designer can be like, oh, that's just a sag thing. We can change that and blah, 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 blah. So it's like interesting marrying the two worlds. And that's why I like this sort of stuff because it sort of dips your toes into, hey, what, what do I actually want out of an amp? Maybe I like less sag. Maybe I like a colder bias. So I really, really appreciate this approach to things. All right, let's check out the uh, amplitude. So this is the uh, level hitting the speaker. I imagine as we increase this, we'll get some speaker distortion going on. That is just a crazy amount of volume. I expect the volume to go up a little bit, but they need to auto gain it. Like increase, have some like crazy compression going on where it rolls off, but that's, it's just too hard to judge. All right, let's try the uh, resonance controls on each of the cab. Now there we go, that's a quick look at the Auto 1111 amp. I'll leave my amp sim scores up here. I'll chuck it up there somewhere. But to give you my final thoughts on everything, I really, really dig their approach to everything that they've got under the hood with the amp. The amount of like characteristics that you can change on that amp really takes things to the next level. Other amp sims might have tons and tons of pedals and all that sort of stuff, and that stuff is great. But having this sort of like, I'm gonna call it like a fractal style approach to uh, amp tweaking, very, very cool stuff. If you're the sort of person that wants like a wide array of uses, you just want to have like one or two amp suites, then you know you may not get this because you want all those effects for your mixing, for whatever you're doing. Maybe you're in a cover band and you want to play those smash mouth tunes. I don't know what you're doing, but if you're a heavy guitar aficionado and you want to go in there and fine tune and tweak things, you'd be hard pressed to beat what you can get out of this. Even just looking at the uh, presets that they have there, there is just so much pushing and pulling between all those options you have at the back of the amp and then all the options you have with the tonal stack, tonal varieties, all that kind of stuff, the impedance curves. It, you know, it can do 500 amp sounds in one. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Everything totally helps out. And of course, stay tuned for more amp sim reviews in September. I will leave links to those up here. And as always, Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video and I'll catch you on the next one.